Um, I have just a couple brief statements to make. Um, I just returned from a very brief trip to Curacao last week. I took the opportunity to meet with the new Minister of Health, Environment, and Nature, Ms. Uh, Minister Jesus Lito. And the, the purpose of the meeting was a very simple meeting. We've um, had a good working relationship um, that we've developed between St. Martin, um, Aruba, and Curacao. I wanted to make sure that while the minister was developing her plans for her term in office, to make sure that cooperation uh, between St. Martin and Curacao remained a priority. Um, based on our conversations, certainly um, that is uh, the plan. In areas in particular, vector control, um, things like sharing resources in terms of how we're dealing with Zika. You know, it's very interesting. When I um, attended a conference in Bonaire in October, it was interesting. They hadn't had rain in Bonaire for months, and actually the time that we were there was raining. And yet Bonaire has a Zika problem. Z Bonaire does have mosquitoes. And, and it, it made me really think about if there, they don't have any rainwater, they don't really have cisterns because there's not much rain there, and they still have a mosquito problem, it just really does show how daunting a task it is if we really want to control vectors in St. Martin, where we're blessed with you know, lush landscaping because of the rainfall, we really do need to have the public fully engaged in the process. Combining resources in terms of purchasing abroad, um, this would mean perhaps medical referrals, trying to lump our purchases together to try and negotiate better pricing. Sharing information on national health insurance. Um, Curacao has implemented a number of things. Some things, um, it's always good to learn from each other, see what's been done well, um, see what their problems were, and make sure that we learn from our um, neighbors' lessons. Um, in particular, prescription drug costs. There was an interesting article in the newspaper recently, and it's also a, a focus of the ministry, has been a focus already, how do we bring down the cost for prescription drugs. Um, also a discussion about the hospital. Um, Curacao, as you know, is building a new hospital. And interesting, I mean, I have some preliminary information. Um, even with their cost overruns, which are caused by moving their location multiple times, um, delays, um, their preliminary numbers that are still showing that the price that we've received for the proposed hospital in St. Martin is very competitive. So we're doing more and more of our research to make sure that the appeal process and the comfort level there is there for government and for the citizens that the project is the right project and properly funded. I'd like to take a moment to commend SEDV um, on their improved performance regarding collections. Um, I think you've taken note that they've raised 28 million guilders over what their projected amounts for collection were. And this is very much the fruit of the labors that we've been working on. Improving compliance has been a priority in the last year. And I believe I could safely say on behalf of the Council of Ministers, is a key focal point going forward for, for this government. Um, we've already had in Council of Ministers a number of discussions about how between the different ministries we need to cooperate in terms of sharing information and also in terms of how we improve compliance overall. Compliance with the law should be the path of least resistance and non-compliance must have consequences. If we want to live in a society that is sustainable, this is a fundamental principle that needs to be enshrined in everything that we do. And again, as government, this is a priority going forward. We've already had good council of ministers discussions about how we're going to synchronize our efforts across ministries. And again, a reminder, next week, the entire week, is going to be National Health Insurance Conference week, our, our facilitator, Professor Van de Ven is coming in from Holland. He arrives on Sunday. And from the time he touches ground to the time he leaves, we are going to be withdrawing as much information as we can from his experiences and lessons learned. We have a number of meetings set up with Council of Ministers to inform them as to what the progress is on national health insurance, parliament, number of council, higher councils of state, um, the civil service in terms of uh, um, how it's organized, what the potential impacts would be. And this will culminate with a two-day stakeholder session on Thursday and Friday of next week 
invitations unfortunately have gone out rather late, so, but we do anticipate um, a good attendance. I going. 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 Are you going? Friday, April 28th, Carnival Village. Yes, it's the first Calypso tent taking place on February 21st, 2017 at the Carnival Village in Dallas Bay, Marigot. Come out and hear 10 Calypsonians performing for you. King Bobo, Ricky the Fox, Lady Righteous, Ebony Impress, Shira, Baker Jr., Dr. Ray, Pepper, Chipman, and the reigning Calypso monarch, Shakia. It all takes place at the Carnival Village in Gallagher, Marigot, starting at 8 p.m. Entrance fee is only $10 or 10 euros. Come out and support your local Calypsonians in the first Calypso tent. It takes place on February 21st, 2017. You better be there because I'm coming to be sticking me out. Let me know. Life is a journey full of connections. You're in safe hands even when life starts too soon. You don't have to miss a single beat. When a bad hair day makes you sad, just sharing can bring you joy and more to come. They take the plunge, turn fear into faith, while you capture those beautiful moments. In the game of life, it's family that counts. They'll be there even when you lose. We all have our moments of reflection and hope. And when you feel you're losing everything in life, we're there because there's more to come. When life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. We're here to connect you and share life. Tell so when you want more. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Need a loan that's quick and easy Island Finance Up to 50,000 guineas real easy Island Finance For education, yes. a renovation That's no problem Ooh. Yes, it's true, that's not all They're quick and friendly too Island Finance Appliances, vacations, even fix your car You can depend on Island Finance Well, on February the 4th, we will be having the luncheon on the waterfront of Marigot as from 7 p.m. And what you can expect from this is um, a fet. A, a fet. We, what we're going to be doing, first you're going to have the official speeches by the local officials, uh, such as the, the president of the, the collectivity. We're hoping also to have the deputy, Mr. Daniel Gibbs, and as well as the senator, and of course the president of our carnival um, committee, Mr. jean philippe Richardson, who will be giving their official speech. Then we will be the symbolic hand of the key, so that means that we will be in charge of the road from February 4th to March 1st. So on the program, just to give a little hint of what we're having, we're going to be having the Gunslinger Steel Band who will be putting on a show for, for the, the, the attendees. Also, we're going to we have um, Shakia, who is the first 
Calypso winner on the Dutch side who will also be performing. We also have Kenyo Bali, who's um, the first runner up in the, um, the power category for the Soka Rumble this year. And we have the TG band who will also be performing. So this event is set is um, scheduled to set the tone uh, for Carnival 2017. So, so run me down now the rest of the events that you're having because you're starting on February We're the starting 4th. on February right. the 4th, then we go down right the following day. That's February, Sunday, February 5th. We have the a Children Candy Parade, which is a new addition to the program this year, where the kids will be, um, it's like a mini jump up, what we would call a warm up for the kids, as they usually have one children parade on the front side. But this year we're giving them an extra, uh, an extra opportunity to, to be on the road and and showcase and and perform as well for the, the the public under the team candy so they will be wearing customized shirt that they will be decorating um, free of choice three free of, uh, of choice they will be decorated with candies so that's on Sunday February 5th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and that will be starting from home and tool parking lot so make sure save that date. Then we move on to the following weekend, which is the Saturday, February 11th. We will be having our first ever Light Up the Road Parade. So that's a new addition again to the program. And we're scheduled to have three bands on the road. Um, North Respect Band, we have um, Kylo and Styli Band from St. Croix, and also um, a band from St. Kitts who will also be performing who will be on the road for that lightning parade and that starts at 8 p.m. sharp and then we just go down to the streets of Marigold all in lights of well. So we're going to be lighting up the road on February 11th. Then on February 12th, that's Sunday, February 12th, we're going to be having the Miss Pichonette and Miss Junior pageant and that will be that will be held at the Carnival Village in Galis Bay and that is scheduled to start at 4 p.m. This year, um, just like last year, we are, we are able to host this event in collaboration with the Paris Scolaire and that will be, and we're thanking them of course for that partnership. And this year we have four contestants for the Pichonet category and five contestants for the Junior category. Do I continue with the program? As you can see, it's already it's already well, starting off on a good foot. <laughs> well, so far, I see that you have, you have a very good track schedule. Yes, we do. You completely finished with all what you have to I'm not even at half. Schedule. I'm not even at half of the schedule. Just share it. Just, just I'm, share I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm so excited about it, so I'm just gonna continue. So then after now we go back, we're going to the following weekend, which is February 18th. So this year we're having the individual competition. We're gonna have it separately from the regular, from the general parade. Usually the individual costumes are judged during the um, Sunday parade and the Tuesday parade. But I'm being conscious of the, the price that is um, allocated to um, billing an individual costume, we decided to give the, cost, the, the, the revelers who will be um, parading in an individual competition and the individual parade to give them an extra platform where they will be able to dance freely. As you know, during the parade, they, they have the other revelers with them and then after also the judges do not get to see the little, you know, the little perfections that are put into the costume. So we're giving them that extra highlight and that will be held on, like I mentioned, Saturday, February 18th, and that will be held on the Boulevard de France, which is on the waterfront, and it's from 8, it's from 7 p.m. to um, 11 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. I'm so excited that I'm, I'm missing up, <laughs> I'm mixing up the time, so that is an event, of course, that you don't want to miss. So far, we have five individuals registered for the children category, and we have seven for the adult category and we're looking forward to having more more um, more costume more participants for that competition then on Sunday because it's always Saturday Sunday so as of um, February 4th you need to reserve all your Saturdays and Sundays because there will be something every Saturday and every Sunday so on February 19th we have the Children Parade and this year's team for the Children Parade is the Seven Wonders of the World. So that is a team that has been given to all um, troops who will be taking part in the Children Parade. So you need to come out and see how 
created, the troops have been, um, will be with the team, um, the Seven Wonders of the World. And this year, we have so far registered, we have 10 children, troops registered for the Children Parade that will be on, I repeat, Sunday, February 19th from 3 p.m. Find something and wind it up. Wind it up. Get ready for another season of fun. Carnival is in Mountain 2017 from February 4th to March 1st. Six parades, four pageants, and six shows. Carnival is back. I'm so ready to jump. Plenty bam bam. Carnival again. Man and woman. Carnival again. Masqueraders jumping in the rain. Give me the toilet paper for Juve. People all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles Credit Card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to my card today at WIB. Yes, it's the first Calypso tent taking place on February 21st, 2017 at the Carnival Village in Dallas Bay, Marigot. Come out and hear 10 Calypsonians performing for you. King Bobo, Ricky the Fox, Lady Righteous, Ebony Empress, Shira, Baker Jr., Dr. Ray, Pepper, Chipman and the reigning Calypso monarch Shakia. It all takes place at the Carnival Village in Gallagher, Marigot, starting at 8 p.m. Entrance fee is only $10 or 10 euros. Come out and support your local Calypsonians in the first Calypso tent. It takes place on February 21st, 2017. You better be there because I'm coming to be sticking me out. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. I going. 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 With the bike. Are you going? Friday, April 28th, Carnival Village.
have become the CEO of GEBE because the number of calls that I've received. I even had someone said, oh, when the Prime Minister said, this is unacceptable. You can't have people go into the Christmas with a garbage situation like that. He had jumped on it one time, it was taken care of, but we hearing nothing against the Prime Minister had to call you and tell you, I don't have no current. So what are you going to do about it? And I told the person, listen, I am in the same position that you're in. I have no electricity myself. I was sleeping in the vehicle, the mosquitoes, it was hot. So I understand the concerns of St. Martin. I'm waiting on an update from GEBE concerning the outages. Because yes, they did promise when the new engine go online, you know, we wouldn't have the constant outages again, but I want to sort of calm the trepidations and the fears of the residents because they feel as if we are going to have another October, another November situation where it was going every day, every day in certain areas for a number of hours. I don't think that's the case. I think it's a simple ticket, not, not simple, but I think it's just a matter of getting things online, getting things par, and then it will be worked on. I spoke to Iris and she said that she will update me, will get the information. And soon, as I get it, I will let everyone know whether it's in the newspaper or probably next week in another press briefing. But as it is right now, I'm not up to date with what is happening at GEBE concerning the outages with electricity. Uh, I must say that I'm much more pleased with garbage collection in certain districts. I'm still hoping that Middle Region would speed up and come on par a little bit more with their collection. I haven't had the opportunity yet to speak to the hauler in that area to really find out what is happening. But again, you want to give everyone a chance. So I know Middle Region because I've received a few calls also about that area. and. I will have a discussion with the hauler and ask him, you know, what's the concerns about it. But when you have the go-to person who really knows the ins and outs concerning garbage and is in a situation right now dealing with is Mr. Boncampo, you have to sort of give him a time to heal and deal with the situation that he's having right now. So it will, I will ask for some time to deal with that issue. On Friday last, the staff of Romney went to a dump to take a real good look at the situation at hand. And I make mention that everyone who probably went through Hurricane Lewis, how devastated it was. If everything's supposed to happen, or, or to happen, which God forbid, and we don't want ever to happen, it's a serious situation that need to be tackled, and I believe that this government is committed in dealing with this issue, which is our landfill. You know, it is a serious situation, and I will continue to mention it because we need to reach to a stage where one, and I mentioned it before, the way we dispose of our garbage cannot continue that way anymore. It simply cannot. You know, the simple matter of throwing your plastic, throwing your paper, throwing your refuge in the same bin is not going to work anymore. We had a long discussion with some interesting individuals who's talking about a MRF system. I also had a discussion with the son of the Prime Minister Mr. Undi Marlin, when he came with the idea on how we are going to separate garbage. We also have a local businessman who is ready, willing, and up, and who can go in a couple of months in terms of having garbage to his facility, hiring individuals to separate garbage. But, but again, I'm asking every household to do their part because we need to be conscious about it. And this is, this is not something that we are looking into, which will build the garbage and have it in time for 
moving forward with waste to energy. I believe waste to energy is definitely the way to go, but there are many other ideas out there. But like I make mention right now, on the island, as it is right now, there's a local businessman with a facility where we can start in a couple of months, whether it's two or three months, start separating garbage. And that's one of the avenues we are really, really looking into and we're going to move forward with that.